Hey everybody, and welcome to the next Smoke and Flame quick tip. Now this one's going to be on a topic that might confuse a lot of people and maybe a lot of people might shy away from, but um, is definitely worth covering, and that's um, what nodes inside of Flame, and just in general, benefit when working in linear versus video. Now, uh, before I did this, um, I emailed uh, Doug, who's um, one of the color guys at um, working on most of the new color management stuff, and I asked him, I said, can you uh, can you give me a heads up on what um, what nodes and operations you know prefer linear? So this is verbatim from him. Which um, so the algorithms that prefer linear are compositing, um, optical effects such as lens blur, motion blur, resizing, subpixel, uh, 3D rendering, and relighting. So that I'm going to be able to explain. This stuff here is out of my wheelhouse, to be honest. Um, I get most of it. Um, read it through, pause it, um, and play with uh, your own footage, you know. Um, a lot of it refers to dealing with um, camera raw stuff is going to give you more realistic results, and that usually is the whole point with um, with doing linear stuff. So first thing I just wanted to mention is right now in Flame as it stands, um, these are the, a quick kind of look at some nodes in Flame that have linear toggles, and by linear toggles I mean um, they have the image type and by default right this one's just set to auto and that's going to pass the data through to whichever node um, contains video or whatever color space for that matter and this one it's auto other or scene linear so we've got pretty much all the keys um, the denoise um, has that option in the node preference as well um, exposure um, where we've got the image data type which is great um, again most of the keys um, the regrain as well it has it um, again more keys and action in the node preferences in rendering has the color management active too that can um, just uh, help maintain um, you know before we had the color management and it was the light editor it was a lot more painful where you know your mats would be viewed um, as linear but it wasn't the right way and you used to have to toggle the mat thing so so yeah let's um let's have a look so what nodes and operations benefit from working in linear color space. So it's going to go into two up and let's look at the first one, which is motion blur. So I've just got some text. Um, you see, uh, if I double click on it, you see right now this one is set to uh, unknown color space. I have the exact same text now and I've set it to scene linear Rec 709 um, sRGB. And you see, again, um, one of the benefits of the new color management stuff is it auto toggles for us. Um, even though I'm working um, right now in my project settings, um, you see uh, color policy is at legacy. So again, you can, this hasn't been designed to, you know, you have to work this way. I'm working in legacy still, and I'm still able to, you know, have these cool toggles that auto deal with um, the linear and video color space. So again, we've got these two bits of text and you know what, What's the first thing that um, really does benefit and you know it actually really does and that's motion blur so if we just scrub through so you've got text and then it's literally got a couple of keyframes and you see it's just spinning across and you know doing its thing and again instantly even before we comp this um, we see how different that already looks um, so let's just look at it over a you know really simple a over b and right now, um, you know, it's, it's nothing to do with pre-molting, you know, it should be pre-multiplied. And that's, again, if I go one to one, you see, there's nothing wrong with it per se, but when you compare it to the linear, it just, <laughs> personally, you know, it automatically looks more real, more what you'd expect. Um, and that's the point with, you know, all this stuff is it, uh, the the more you kind of maintain the linear stuff, um, the more the less you have to fight the footage to um, to do what you want it to do. So again, um, motion blur, that's um, one good thing um, that you know Flame actually prefers um, just in general. Now the next thing, which I'm sure most of you already know, is blurs. So this is just regular footage, um, you know that I've used. It's just sRGB. Um, I promoted it to scene linear here and this guy I've just promoted so it's 16 float so it's fair on each side so first thing to look at is blurs so again my blur here's my gradient um, I'm using a sapphire z blur and if I just toggle between these two you see okay uh, this bottom guy here which is scene linear is you know it's giving us 
a little bit a different results, especially in the highlights, you know, but I guess it's still very trivial. There's nothing about it that you go, yeah, I really want to use, you know, scene linear in this case. Okay, so the next the next example is this guy where we're using the defocus. You know, it's pumped up to 150. Um, you know, this is just using the video again. Again, it doesn't look horrible, um, but when we toggle then the same setup, but using the scene linear, you see we instantly have these nice bokehs and just what is a lot more realistic um, and natural looking in terms of highlights and fall off and stuff like that. So again, just something that gets you closer to usually where you want to go because you usually want stuff to look good. So, you know, here's another example. This is just using 3D blur. And again, it's very subtle. Um, it's more, uh, this, this really shines in, you know, especially uh, like lens into focus type thing. So, so blurs are one thing to look. Um, glows as well, but not as much from my experience. Glows just sometimes benefit from higher values anyway, and you can get to the same result. Um, but, you know, um, your results may, may vary. Now, the next thing is uh, blending. Now, a lot of people know, um, you know, the, the math is wrong. So this is by default with video. I'm adding these two together, you know? You know, uh, the thing that everyone says, which is one plus one equals 10 or something with video. And you see, um, if I alt spacebar, we see it's, well, 0.9 for red, let's say. Let's look at the result, 1.8. Um, actually, I'll turn on this guy and we can see it here. So before 0.8, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not the right math. And you know, that's usually not what you want when you're adding something on. And again, you're not always going to add the same image on top of itself, but you get the point. If we go to, again, the same, same footage, but promoted to scene linear, an ad looks more like an ad. It's more pleasing. It's not, it's not blowing out stuff. Again, it, it handles everything right because it's living in the linear color space. Again, this is just what linear is kind of made for and flame will prefer. Um, and again, there's no right or wrong way with this type of stuff. So the next thing is um, resizing and sub pixel reposition. So personally, I haven't, all the other stuff I've shown you, I've, I've personally used um, and, and uh, you know, we'll hammer home that it's way better. This, what I'm gonna show you, I don't know if it's the best example. If you guys can think of a better example when you see this, um, let me know. But I figured this is kind of good and, you know, will get me to where I want to go. Um, so I'm going to show you. So each again, these guys is video, scene linear. Um, we're doing changing the output res. So we're going from 3456 by 2304 to 192080. And then I've made sure that these are sub pixel values. So nothing's at zeros, nothing's integer. Um, and they're exactly the same for both. So I'm scaling it down and now I'm scaling it up crazily. Um, again, exactly the same for each. If we go between them on this side um, and I just toggle between, it doesn't look visually like anything's going on. Um, however, if I, um, I'm just gonna show you what I did for this. I'm gonna copy this and then invert it. So it's going back to video. And I'm gonna look at the difference of these using the difference mat um, and just shift E to pull up the exposure. You see, there is quite a bit of difference going on and uh, it's interesting. I mean, this might be sub pixel resolution. Um, it might not be. Um, the thing to note too is um, if I look at this output, spacebar one, um, and I do change um, obviously our filtering algorithm, of course that will change too, which is expected behavior. Um, but the interesting thing is, is when we do do that, if I throw these away, and again, we're doing the same thing. If we do the difference again on ourself, just with itself, um, those crazy, if we shift E and add up, those, those differences don't exist. So, you know, this might not be the, the best explanation. If it isn't, please, please let me know. But again, this is using the same thing. Again, this guy, which is linear, this guy, which is video. I'm promoting this guy back to video. And again, default values with the difference mat is not looking too different. And if I look at the results and shift A, you see we're getting some weird patterns with the algorithm or the upscaling. And I'm guessing, again, I'm not 
by no means a color science scientist, but I'm guessing that is to do with the algorithm and how it handles subpixel uh, repos. So again, that one I'm a bit meh about, but that'll do for there. Now the next cool part of this is relighting and actual lighting. So the first um, the first thing to show is I've got again the same same thing here. I'm just going to actually reset that. So I've got a still, you know. Um, it's just a close-up of a leather couch. It's nice and blurred. Again, video and then scene linear. And you see it's going to be toggling just here. Um, first thing, let's try map abstraction. So this, again, this is just the default values using map extraction. And, you know, it's extracting normals, sure. Um, maybe behaving how you'd expect because, you know, this is kind of the bit in focus. This stuff's blown out a little bit soft too. So, you know, it's grabbing some bits. You know, we can scale up. You know, we can play with the height and all this type of stuff to kind of extract what we want. But instantly, by default, um, if we look at the scene linear version of this, we're getting a lot better extraction of um, highlights and, and info for this normal map. Again, just by default, um, just by un uh, un that curve when we um, when we put it back to linear color space. Now, another example is. Um, Again, that same texture using um, Substance uh, Materialize PBR, um, just with a light chucked in. I'm just going to go to Alt 2 and then Option Escape. Um, if I go to the top one, which is video, and then the bottom one that's linear, again, we're getting... Uh, this is, a, again, with no IBL map at all. Um, but just by default values, again, we're getting something that's looking a lot more pleasing. And, you know, usually where you're wanting to put put something which is to be more realistic so again by default just works a lot better now what another way we can see this as well is uh with actual 3d so like this is literally just using um if i look at the mat it's using the 3d model it's just one of the imported guys um you see that's that's our guy um you see if i go all two and then one there we go so that's our video version and that's our scene linear version. Um, and again, uh, this has been maintained in action because we have color management assigned to it. You see, once we do assign that, it says scene linear. Um, you see now in here, it gets passed through, so it's same as back. So that's why this is behaving differently. Now, um, again, like uh, we're getting a lot more realistic and natural fall off of the lights. And again, it's, it's less dark because usually if you're lighting with this or doing stuff with stuff like this, you're gonna add another light to compensate and that's usually not what you want to do. Um, and again, I'll just um, I'll just quickly copy that and put it in the video just so you can see the difference again. Um, so again, that's the video one, and that's the scene linear one. Again, there's a massive difference the way the light behaves and falls off. And again, it's just a lot more realistic. Now, the other thing to note too is when you do uh, promote something to linear, um, because of you know the tools that we do have that do have the linear toggles these are great um, tools I'd use for color um, um, there is some matchboxes too that give you the option um, but it'd be great if more of these did exist um, you know th the way it handles color is a little bit tricky if you are um, if we just quickly look at this one I'm just going to duplicate this and chuck that there and go alt 2 okay so this is our our video signal and then this is our linear signal, which makes sense because um, it's been unflattened. But the result is uh, when you do color corrections, it's not going to behave exactly as you're used to. Um, you know, things are going to be a lot harder to control stuff in the shadows because everything is kind of crunched down. Um, so any adjustments to the shadows are going to be very heavy handed. But, you know, on the plus side, um, you know, adjustments to highlights are going to be very, very fine and minute because there's not much living in the highlights. Um, again, uh, hopefully uh, in the future we have a lot more stuff, um, especially in the color tools and stuff where it matters, um, where we do have the option or it can auto detect um, it, that we are working in scene linear. So that's gonna be it for this quick tip guys. Um, I hope this was useful. Um, I hope it makes sense. Any questions, comments, um, leave me a, a comment below. Cheers.